are now referring to fuel injectors, which is where the fuel is sprayed out. You have a single spray injector, you have a dual spray. Dual always means two. As you can see over here, two passages are for the fuel to be sprayed out. You have electrical connector, two pins over here. The better one over here, <clears throat> you can see over here, this is the electrical part of it. This is where the connector goes to, a B plus, and also the other one goes to the computer, which controls it. What do we mean by controlling it? Now, let's see a diagram. What we mean about controlling the fuel injector, a pictorial view of it, this is where the fuel obviously is sprayed in, you can see it, has a filter. Now, the best way to understand, to learn these things is from the textbook, when I, like I started, <clears throat> on a cold start, there is much fuel <clears throat> being sprayed out. The engine is cold, everything is cold, you need a lot of fuel being transferred into the cylinders. Electronically wise, and let, let me show you the picture better. Now, if you would look at it electronically wide, like I just mentioned before, electrical connector from ECM, which is the computer. The computer is giving this signal. You don't really have to understand much about the signal, but just to understand on a cold start. What's a cold start? <clears throat> a cold start is, let's say, January. 20 degrees below freezing, below 32, below. It's a cold start. You want to take your kids to school. Electronically wise, there is a signal. The green lines that I put over here determines the pulse over here. It is called the width of the pulse. As the car warms up, <clears throat> this pulse, this pulse will shrink <clears throat> from here to here. Now it shrank from here to here. From here to here. Now it shrank even more. What does that infer, electro electronically wise? That, that the injector and the cylinders are getting warm. The engine is getting warm. You don't need that much. The computer does not have to give that much time for opening <clears throat> the fuel injector. This is on time or open fuel injector. It's open open less open less open until it's a at this time it's a little open in milliseconds why because you already spent enough fuel to make the engine cold uh, i'm sorry to make it hot so therefore in the beginning we were freezing now we got to where the engine is nice and warm and you're getting warm air into the panels the vents <clears throat> for the driver and the passenger so this is what's happening electronically wide. Who's doing this? The commands by the computer. How can the driver, how can you see it? You don't have to understand electronically wise. How can you see this being imitated? When you look at the RPM, if you have a tachometer in your dashboard, you'll start out over here, let's say when this is very cold, maybe 1,000 RPM or 1,100 RPM. You'll go down to 1,000, 900, 800, 700, 600 RPM, which is the idle speed. So you as the driver can see if it's cold outside, the RPM has to be high. What does that tell you? That means the computer is doing its job. The computer is taking this with pulse and stretching it. So you can't blame the computer. He's programmed to do something and he's doing what he's programmed to do. Namely, piss a lot of fuel into that cylinder and open up that fuel injector for uh, quite a while. So RPM is high. As we get, let's say 15 minutes later, 20 minutes later, your RPM settled at 600 RPM. Where does that command come from again? That you went from 1,000 to 600 or whatever, 400 RPM less. Again, the PCM or the ECM. So when you see that, you have to think one thing. The computer is doing something right. The fuel injector is doing something right. Why? Because the engine is getting warmer. When the engine is getting warmer, what happens? The RPM goes down.
That means the fuel injector is spraying more fuel. Okay, let's look at the computer like we did before. Remember I was saying in the previous videos, inputs and outputs. This can be any, any computer module for Toyotas, for Hondas, for Highlanders, for uh, uh, Sonata, whatever. It doesn't make a difference. The concept is always the same. I was asked a question about what does it control the output. What are the inputs first? We said inputs. Remember, inputs to modules, to computer modules, are sensors. But not only sensors. Look what's involved. And this is how I learned automotive in the beginning over 20 years ago. From this textbook and another textbook. As a... As a a viewer mentioned, uh, I guess, a comment uh, the tech, when he saw it online, automotive, technology, a system approach, it looked very expensive. It seemed very expensive, actually. That's because they are. You're talking about seven, 800 pages of a textbook. <laughs> so uh, do some research, see if there is PDF and things like that. You know, um, it is quite expensive, like I said. That's why I'm here, to teach you what the textbook teaches you, and hopefully... You'll see it hands-on. <clears throat> You'll see the electronics of it. You'll understand it much more clearer. Practical is practical, but hands-on, you cannot beat hands-on. So you will see a guarantee. Coolant temperature, what is that? That's a sensor. Engine de detonation. That means it, sometimes you get like these flames or these little, like after a, a fire, let's say, you get all these little little fires that uh, uh, come up. Well, after the 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 compression and all that, you get like these little warm spots, so to say. There is a, a, a sensor for that. Exhaust uh, oxygen sensor, we know, obviously for oxygen. Camshaft, crankshaft sensor, we spoke of throttle position, air temperature, EGR vacuum, fourth gear. Now, not a sensor, that's why I brought this whole th issue up. It has to know which gear you're in, first, second, third gear, overdrive. What is that to the computer? What does it mean to him? That's an input. He controls the transmission control module, which controls what? The solenoids, which control the gear change. In first gear, you have, right? You have torque, great torque. As you go up in gears, third gear, you go down in torque, but you go more in speed. You need speed as you go up. When you park, you need torque. So you have to know which gear you're in. Who decides? He decides by everything, all these oxygen sensors. Park in neutral, we, obviously there's a switch for that. He has to know if you park neutral, reserve, uh, um, reverse, mass airflow sensor, system voltage. This is one I didn't discuss. He has to know the battery voltage. He has to know is it 12 volts, is it 11 volts. He has to know the alternator voltage. Whatever voltage is being supplied on the B plus line, he has to monitor it. And he has to make the alternator, make the changes to give you the right voltage body control module input now this was for the the ecm okay now also uh, body control module which is the one that's f that is for accessories the lights the power windows things like that body control module input cruise control status right vehicle speed sensor and ac request if you have the air conditioning on what's the output <clears throat> We know what the inputs are, and of course there's many, many more. This is the command. Who does he command? Torque converter clutch, the fuel pump we spoke about, air conditioning. You made an air conditioner request, so he'll turn on the clutch relay. Engine cooling fan, right? Canister purge is when you have vapor coming from the tank. Uh, exhaust, uh, exhaust gas recirculation. You want to reburn the gas. Fuel injectors. We spoke about electronic spark timing on air control. This is what we didn't, and that's why I want to speak about this. What's another command that he gives? <clears throat> the check engine light, <clears throat> as we've all seen it. So he's in charge. When he sees something that's not right here, his program, his instructions written here by program is to put the red flag or a white flag. That red flag is, to us, a check engine light, which we dread, especially when we have inspection because you cannot pass inspection with, obviously, check engine. So he controls engine uh, check engine light, serial data, which is the computer data line that I spoke about. 
and the trouble code. He gives out the, comp the, the trouble codes. If there's a problem with one of these, they're not in the right voltage range or something or temperature range, he'll show the driver and you'll get a diagnostic trouble code which you can extract from obviously called the DLC um, for um, uh, a scanner tool. So <clears throat> much to do about this. I, I, I mentioned this a couple of times. Very important. Has to, the gear, very important. Control status, the vehicle speed set. These are all inputs. And you have to remember, uh, starter motor, the relay, the relays are also outputs. So when you think about computer, I hope you have a better understanding now of computers, how they work, inputs and outputs. So please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and the other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Uh, if you don't see anything, just browse through it. You'll see something that I go over uh, relays in circuits. I measured them. Thanks for watching.